I sat up at Green Hills Coin Show Sunday. It's in the greater Cincinnati area. If you don't know, you can go to coinzip.com and you can see where it's held, what times. Uh, it's the last Sunday of every month. It was rocking. I mean, it was packed in there. Um, the dealer tables were, were filled up and there were there were collectors everywhere by 10 o'clock, by 11, 12. I mean, it was really busy and bustling. I uh, got emails from the, uh, Jim Huffman, who is the show manager, and he said it was the best show that he had seen in a long time. And a lot of other dealers chimed in that email. So I'm going to share with you some things that I bought, some people that I talked to, and share with you something I bought just for me, for my own personal collection. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you that. So stay tuned. Here's my website, PortsmouthCoinShop.com. And I do have Silver Eagles. I have 2020s and 2016s. I also have these Paramount Horde. They're the Red Holders. Now, these are not Redfield. And what happened was, is Paramount was so successful with their Redfield holders that they started putting their own coins in Paramount holders. Now, these coins are really nice. There's a variation of dates here. Like I said, I put some of the dates and mints and things like that. But they are really nice coins. Some of them do make the grade. You know, some of them don't. So if you get a chance, come over to PortsmouthCoinShop.com and check them out. I want to share a picture with you. I talked with Robert and Florida Lena from CoinOp, and we always do it at the shows. We always have a good time joking around. I met a bunch of people who view my channel, watch my videos. It was great to see everyone. I did some business with a few of you. Thank you for coming to my table and saying hello. So here, I want to show you um, a little photo op <laughs> with CoinOp. So here we are in all of our glory, CoinOp and CoinHelp you together. <laughs> Just having a good time. We're sitting around the table. We had our own little round table going on there. <laughs> so it was really good to see you guys. So anyways, like I said, it was a, a really good time. So I want to show you a few things behind me. I'm not going to show you all these Morgans because it's the same stuff. 63, 64 is common dates. But I do have a few special coins that I want to show you here. And also, we're going to talk about some of these off labels like ICG and Annex. And even uh, I've got a PCI. And we're kind of looking at those. But I want to show you a couple of things. I got this stack here. These are all Franklin half dollars. Somebody did a bulk submission. And it doesn't bother me to have duplicates because I would rather have duplicates because I put this stuff up on my website and some of you guys like to buy them. And some of you may not get the date because I only have one. So I always try to buy duplicates when I can. But these here are 1963 Franklin half dollars. Now, most people would be like, why in the world would someone send these in? Well, when you're doing a bulk submission, you've got to have so many coins, like 100 coins, 50 coins, 200 coins, and you put a minimum grade of 64, okay? If they get higher, you know, you want them to be higher, but some of them are not, I and mean, they can send them back to you and no grade or whatever. Well, these here were sent back as Mint State 64, each one of them. And the reason I do this, I say, I can look at multiple 63s that were graded at the same time, more than likely by the same graders or grader, and I can say, okay, this looks like a 64. Go to the next one. And I could say, you know, it looks like a 64. Or it doesn't look like a 64. And I do this all the time. I, I'm always buying multiples if I can. And this is how I get an eye for how they're actually grading at the grading companies. It's kind of like maybe even counting the marks, appearances. To me, a grade has an appearance. It's not so much counting marks. It's not always counting where. It's, it's like a pattern to me. I think being an artist, you know, I went to college and I was a major in painting and I did life drawing and we drew still lifes and did all kinds of things, sculptures. I learned to see patterns. I learned to see light reflections and light going through objects, not just the object itself. And it's very important to, when you're looking at coins for me, is to recognize that. And it helps me whenever I see fakes, I can tell a coin's fake because it's just off a little bit. And if I'm drawing something, I want it to look just like that drawing. If I'm doing a real realistic, uh, you know, realism then I want it to look like it. Well, I have to be able to recognize that it, this is what it looks like. It's like an artist rendition, basically. You know, I can go abstract and it doesn't really matter, 
But if I want to paint a coin, if I ever decided to paint a coin or draw a coin, which I've never done, um, believe it or not, <laughs> but if I ever do, I will have to paint. I want it to look exactly like the coin, so I'm going to have to know what that looks like, okay? The shapes of the letters and everything. I know it's kind of difficult for some people because maybe that's a little more advanced, but that is how I do what I do. That is how I recognize grades, and I've got a little different look at things. So, also, so I got some more. I've got um, 54s, and to me, these are all 63s. When I look at the 63s and 64s, even though I know they're different years, you know, I can see this is a little bit better. I can agree with that. See, I can agree. These are 63s. This one probably looks more like a 64. We just saw that. The thing of it is, I'm not trying to split hairs, not trying to create controversy here, but it is what it is when you only have one point in between two coins. Sometimes they can flip-flop. just depends on the grader. That's the reason why I know that if an artificial intelligence grading service or grading software had enough samples of all of these, there could be a baseline created. See, a baseline is IT terms and software terms. Whenever you have a, a, a kind of sets the pace for everything. So if this is a 63 full bell lines, this is a 63 not full bell lines. Whenever the you have enough of these, you can create a baseline for what that 63 should look like. And there might be some points or minus, you know, a little bit of, on each side of marks or whatever. But it's going to be pretty much based off of a baseline that people don't have up here. Most people don't have a baseline for grades. It's either 63 or 64 and it's whatever. It doesn't look it. It does look it. So that's the reason why I'm so adamant about getting the coin grading app together here. Um, eventually it will happen. Just take some time to get things, you know, honed in. Uh, like I said, you know, you know, it also takes uh, a financial obligation. So here's a 58. This is a 58D actually and a 63 holder. And it's a nice coin. It looks like a 64 that we just looked at. It doesn't have full bell lines. And just because a Franklin has full bell lines, and this one is pretty close, doesn't mean it's worth a lot of money. There are dates and mint marks that are worth more with full bell lines. And I told you this also got another Redfield. <laughs> but this one is not in a Redfield holder. It's in a Blanchard. Now, this is an older one. It's a 25S, which is a really good uh, date and mint anyways. For those of you who don't know, the mint mark on a peace dollar is right underneath the one on the back there. O-N-E. And that's a Blanchard on there. I had a little sticker on top of it. But, you know, like I said, it's kind of cool. When I see these, I buy them. And, and, you know, another thing. This is another Franklin that I bought. It's 1955. Mint State 65, Bugs Bunny. It's not labeled Bugs Bunny by PCGS because they didn't submit it as a Bugs Bunny, but you can see that it's obvious that it is. So I paid Bugs Bunny money for it. Bugs Bunny money. <laughs> kind of right. So I also bought a nice Buffalo Nickel because I thought it looked a little undergraded, but it doesn't matter. I like to pick choice coins and then offer them up on the site, and I can pay... You know, the 64 money, and you get the coin, and you agree with me, and then you're happy because the customer got something that looks better than it did in the pictures or just as described. And I bought a few looking half dollars, real nice ones. I, I hate passing these up. These are pretty close to Morgan dollars for me when I see these uncirculated. And got their original patina on them. You know, really nice coins. I love these. I wish we can see a modern version of those coins. And I bought this. I thought, uh, I just like the 78S's. I like the way they, the first year of design on these. I don't know why they had to change the hair over the year for. I don't know why. I, I guess just because it was more difficult to strike, possibly. I, I you know, I don't know. I, I just like the design of the 78S and the 78s better. And I... Bought some more nicer Morgans, and also I bought a Barber Quarter, which I don't often do in a graded holder, but it's a 97S. That's a G4. It's a little better of a coin, a little better mint and uh, ear. And as you can see at the bottom, underneath the tail feathers, 
there is an S right next to the shafts of the arrows. That's where the mint mark is on the quarter. It's a little awkward of this place. And it's amazing how they hand punch those mint marks. There is a video, and um, I try, I'll try to find a link to it. And I, we posted it on our help community showing the little tiny rods they use and how they had to temper them and, and just hit, and they hit on those dies and put the mint marks in the dies. It's really kind of amazing. And they could break, and they could put in the wrong position or not hit it hard enough. And it took, they started out in the morning, it took them a while to do that, uh, to, to actually mark, you know, put the mint mark on all the dies. So it's no wonder why there's um, RPMs and repunch mint marks and triple punch mint marks and things like that and broken punches. This one here is a flying eagle. I like to buy nice problem-free coppers. It's hard to buy problem-free coppers. Usually they have an issue. Now this one here is an annex holder. And like I said, guys, I just, I think annex grades just as well as the rest of them. It just doesn't sell for as much. But I see the same inconsistencies and the same conservative and the same liberal. I just think maybe when it comes to cents and when it comes to modern stuff, um, annex might be a little more liberal, but you know, sometimes when you see coins that are undergraded in PCS holders, are they really being liberal or are they more accurate? I mean, you can argue either way. Then I saw a couple of the 1995 double dies. Talked about this in another video. One of my friends, he found one that ended up graded 68 instead of 69. These here are 67. Now, it could be argued that I could send them off and maybe get a higher grade. I bought two of them to offer and they look like really nice coins. I mean, they look at least 67. So you never know, maybe an opportunity for me to maybe resubmit to PCGS and, and see what happens. And then I bought a few modern coins to have um, some Lincoln cents, you know, nothing real special here, but you know, they're reverse proofs that are graded and they're nice sellers. So obviously I want to uh, do that. Now, a couple things, a couple, I had a comments on one of my videos about toning. Toning does not bring down the value of a coin. Not if it's pleasing. Absolutely not. But I can show you some toning here that does bring down the value. Bar none, it doesn't make any difference what anybody says. Very few people want to pay a top dollar for a coin like that. And dealers even discount them. I see it all the time. I don't know what somebody did to this coin before they submitted it. I don't know whether they left dip residue on it, touched it, put their fingers all over it, what sneezed on it, I don't know. But this here is an um, ANA grade, uh, graded holder. The holder itself is probably worth more than the coin. That's the reason I bought it. That and because it was just a part of a lot, and I just went ahead and bought it all. Here's another one. You know, it's, it's obviously not been cleaned, but the toning on it is not that pleasing. It's a little cloudy, uneven. It's a 64, 1886. I don't sell these coins for top dollar. They're just not worth top dollar. I didn't pay top dollar for them. This one here almost gets a pass. Not too bad. Some people like this. This original toning like this. And you know it's probably an end roll from an end of, of a Morgan dollar roll that was rolled up. Sometimes they got rolled up. But they weren't, you know, basically bank wrapped and stored that way. And then here's this one here, and it looks like to me it's a little textile looking or fingerprints or something. But, you know, like I said, when you see stuff like this, it's hard to sell. It's weak struck. And you know, sometimes they set up on the site for a little while, so you have to discount them. And then your reverse is really nice. So like I said, a lot of these coins got toned because they were facing cardboard or they were in a wrapper. Or somebody just put their fingers on them trying to tone them up, thinking they would tone up later on. Well, a lot of times that don't work out very well. It's not very pleasing. Now, I want to get to a couple things when it comes to 1881S. Let's say this one here is Annex, these off holders that most people don't buy. You know, I tend to agree with this grade on this coin here. It's a nice coin. Then I have an ICG, and, you know, it's graded Mint State 64. I can agree with that. It's a nice coin. Of course, here's the reverse. To me, the reverse is, is important for grading, but a lot of times the reverse is going to be a lot nicer than the obverse. The obverse is what brings down the grade on these. Here's another 64. It might have a few more marks in the focal areas, but I can agree with that grade as well. A nice coin. Nice white coins. Oh, this is one of them that's going to confuse some people. This one is very weak struck. It's graded by 
an old PCI holder, Mint State 65. Now I can agree with 65 a little bit. It's kind of right there on the edge. I've seen plenty of 65s, but it's one of those coins where you'd probably end up getting a 64, but then they look at the reverse. The reverse has roller marks. And what happens is, is sometimes they adjust the rollers to when they the coil stock has to be so thin, you know, as thin as a uh, Morgan Dollar. Sometimes it's adjusted incorrectly and it will actually put grooves in the planchet. Well, then when it gets struck, a lot of those, those grooves get struck out, but some of them are still present on the higher points. So you see roller marks on Morgan Dollars. Technically, it's an error, but it's kind of distracting too. Then we have another Annex, which is an 89.0, which is a better year. Mint State 62. And you can see the difference here in the 64s and the 62s uh, or 63s. A lot more marks on the cheek. I can agree with that grade. And then here's the reverse. The reverse is kind of ugly to me. It's a little off, little, you know. When I see it, I see all the marks. I see everything. When I show it in the video, it doesn't look as bad. So that's why I'm careful with images. I don't want to doctor images. I don't want the images to look better because then people get the coin and think, oh, you know. Here's another example of a coin that is just kind of cloudy looking, has a lot of oxidation on the front of it. It's graded by ICG Mint State 64. I agree with the 64 grade, but it's not one of those coins that's going to jump out at you and sell for a bunch of money. Most people would overlook it. The reverse is really nice. So, like I said, I bought some modern coins I'm not going to share. It's not really important to share it for me right now. But I wanted to show you a couple doozies, a couple good picks here. And, and the one that I bought for my collection is coming up, too. This one here is an 1884, and it's a CC, graded Mint State 65 by, by NGC. And here's the reverse. And these coins are getting harder to buy. Harder to find, harder to make deals on. It's hard to pay gray sheet. You got to pay over gray sheet sometimes from a dealer to dealer. And I can tell you something. At that show, Morgan Dollars wholesale to a dealer to dealer for $50 to $52, depending on how nice the coin was. If you wanted a really nice Morgan Dollar, even as a dealer, that's what you had to pay. The gray sheet has 64 Morgan Dollars, graded 64, at $72 a piece. So Morgan's a... a caught up or at least they're you know going up in value the price guides are not really catching up yet i mean they, they're adjusting you know so hopefully this is healthy this market is coins are finally getting their just due as far as value is concerned then i bought this i think that it's it's i think it's undergraded that's just me but this one here is a 1903 proof 66 and it's obviously a liberty nickel it is actually CAC, so it's going to sell for more than Proof 66 money. Because I just honestly think that the coin should have got a little better. I mean, a 67, Proof 67. And I'll bet you if I go into a price guide, I'll see that the 67 probably jumps in value. A lot of times you see that, unfortunately. But the image here, the video, does not do this coin justice. It is a beautiful coin. Very beautiful. So now, <laughs> this one here is... For my personal collection, you might get a laugh out of this one. I'm going to show you the reverse first so everybody knows what it was supposed to be. You guessed it. it. It's a trade dollar, but is it a trade dollar? It was a trade dollar at one time, but it's a potty dollar. <laughs> Someone carved it out and turned it into a potty dollar. These are kind of collectible. First time I saw one at the show, I just bought it. I thought, why not? I actually bought it. He had $200 on it. And I bought it for $175. So I don't know if I'm going to sell it or not. Um, I'm going to keep it back for a while, but that's for me. My little potty dollar. <laughs> I was showing it off at the show. I just had a little bit of fun with it. I think they're cute. I think it's, I don't know why. I'm just a kid at heart, I guess, sometimes. So anyways, thanks for watching my latest video. I hope you enjoyed everything. Next month, head out to Green Hills, Hilliards, the third Sunday of every month in Columbus. Green Hills is in uh, greater Cincinnati area there. It's easy to find the directions. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos. And have a great day. Okay, don't and don't forget Mint State Coin Technologies. Come over here and check out the values. The values are being improved all the time. Here's the trade dollars as we were speaking at the end there. Here's what trade dollars are worth. Check out MintState.com.